welcome to Series 2 of the Great British Quilter podcast. I'm Sarah Ashford and I can't wait to share with you my fantastic lineup of guests over the next eight episodes. I'll be meeting with authors, quilters, shop owners and industry professionals to find out more about them and how they contribute to the world of quilting that we know and love. A huge thank you goes to Orophil Thread who have generously sponsored this series and helped make it possible. Orophil is an Italian thread company specialising in superior quality cotton threads for professional and domestic quilters. With a wide range of threads in varying weights and a beautiful spectrum of colour, quilters can find the perfect thread for their project. Do visit orophil.com for more information. The other sponsor for this episode is Rose Garden Patchwork. They are a sweet, cosy fabric store, carefully curating beautiful fabrics and haberdasheries from Japan. They have a big range of beautiful zippers and charms in different styles and lots of cute pieces and bits to turn your makes into something very charming and special. Rose Garden Patchwork is a small store, but hoping to be a refreshing window through which you can catch a glimpse of the splendid Japanese quilting world. They present and sell fabrics, notions and kits from quilting masters in Japan and they also cherry pick and import Japanese quilting and sewing books. My guest today is Laura Cunningham. Laura is the creator and maker behind Sweet Cinnamon Roses, creating easy to follow sewing patterns that sell all over the world. She got her first sewing machine while pregnant with her daughter Clara. Back then she didn't even know how to turn on the machine, let alone how to sew a straight line, but she loved the idea of creating something for her daughter. So she was eager to learn and started teaching herself. Not long and she got completely pulled into the world of fabric and sewing, making bags, accessories and quilts for her newborn daughter. Fast forward a couple of years and by now she also had her son Sammy and moved from Germany to the northeast of Scotland and she was totally addicted to sewing and loved being a member of our vibrant, caring and inspiring sewing community online. In 2016, she wrote her first pattern for the See It All pouch and again she was hooked. Creating easy-to-follow sewing patterns and helping you out there to also find the confidence to make whatever you desire became became her passion to this day. In her patterns, she carefully talks you through step by step like she's sitting right next to you, your sewing buddy, guiding you through the process. You can find Laura's website over at sweetcinnamonroses.com if you'd like to know more or try one of her patterns for yourself. I've known Laura for several years, firstly through Instagram, then we met at the Stitch Gathering event in Edinburgh. I've loved Laura's adorable patterns from the beginning, so catching up with Laura again on Zoom was such a treat. Morning, Laura. Hi, Sarah. Hello. Thank you, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. How are you doing? Good, good. Thanks so much for having me. It's so exciting. Really nervous, but yeah, so exciting. Thanks so oh, much. Yeah. Yeah. You don't need to be nervous. We're, we're just having a chat. It's absolutely fine. So um, tell us a bit about yourself. Um, where are you from? Uh, I know you live in Scotland, uh, but you don't have a Scottish accent. Yeah, no, I'm from Germany, actually. So yeah, I'm not from, from Scotland. But um, yeah, no, we came here like just a few years ago, like six years ago. I met my husband in 2000 when I studied abroad in, in Glasgow as a student and yeah he was also a student we just fell in love back then and he initially came back with me to Germany so we lived there for a couple of years and had our kids and then um, that was just when our son was born I think he was only like four or six weeks old or something and then we just moved back to Scotland wow. and so yeah now we're living in the northeast of Scotland in a really beautiful spot now here for for a few years and it's just nice I always see the lovely photos that you post by the sea. Yeah, we live by the sea and it's, it's really gorgeous here. So it's really nice. It's a small town by the sea. Lots of German tourists, finally. So ah. I feel I'm not alone because they come by the bus loads here because it's just so pretty. So yeah, there's lots of Germans here around as tourists at least. And yeah, it's really, really nice. I mean, I do miss Germany. I do miss Berlin, uh, the bus of a big town and all that. But um, yeah, I know it's gorgeous here. So And it's great for kids. To- do you get to go back to Germany much? Uh, not, not as much. Yet. Yeah, yeah, not just now. But yeah, no, not as much as I hope for. And yeah, I, I do miss Berlin and my friends and stuff. So, but yeah, it's nice for now. I think where we live just now at the time with the kids being small, it's just perfect. 
But maybe, yeah, I think in a few years we should maybe go back to Germany and just into German culture as well a bit more. Yeah. So how did you first get into sewing and quilting? Um, yeah, that was actually thanks to my husband, because when I was pregnant with my daughter, he bought me my first sewing machine off of Amazon for, I think it was a real cheap machine, like for hundred euros or something. And yeah, he bought that for me and I had no clue what to do. Like <laughs> I just, I, I knew how to switch it on because I wasn't on button and, but then I was sewing and I was literally pulling the fabric towards me instead of just letting the machine do the job because I had no clue. Mm-hmm. And I didn't know anything, like nobody taught me in school or something. And I I had books, I think, by the time. But what I loved the most at that time was like buying all the fabric. So I went really quickly and just learned to love fabric, yeah. even though I didn't know what to do with it. But um, yeah, so I loved that. And I got better at the time. And then, yeah, I got upgraded. I had a new machine and all that. But I was actually just teaching myself. I didn't even know about this whole world and was it Instagram or my Facebook or anything? I was just doing it all by myself. And um, yeah, teaching myself at the time before I just ventured and found out, well, yeah, there's a world outside doing the same. So yeah, that's how I started. <laughs> and, and how would you describe your sewing and quilting style? Oh, um, yeah, I guess modern and fresh. Like I always like it to have a, like a white background to keep it neutral on the background. So I like that. But I mean, pink, I guess, in the end, like everything, if it's pink, I love it. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, like, um, is it then still more than, I don't know if it's pink. <laughs> but I, I like it kind of like, yeah, all the shades of pink and yeah, I, I have to buy it. So I guess that would be me. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I love pink too. So I'm totally with you with that. Definitely. Um, so you're best known for your really lovely small pro- projects such as the Wee Bra Bag, the Wee Travel Pal, uh, the Glitter Pouch, which is just mm-hmm. so sparkly, um, and most recently the Wee Billow Bag. Um, so when did you start writing patterns? You obviously had a very humble start teaching yourself, and now you're a pattern designer. How did yeah. that come about? Yeah, that was more of an accident, I think. That was, um, I think, the first pattern I wrote in 2016, um and there was a see it all pouch back then and I really liked doing that but I didn't really know what to do but it turned out quite good actually people liked buying that and I kind of sold it just mostly to friends at the time and um I was actually contacted by the editor of Love Patchwork and Quilting at the time and she asked me because she liked that pattern as well and then she asked me if I wanted to work for them and I did um and I think I wrote in total about 10 patterns for Love Patchwork at the time which just stretched over more than a year. And it was really nice because they gave me all the confidence saying, actually, yeah, you're good enough. And actually it's quite good. And it was successful enough. So um, that was really nice. And I'm, I'm really thankful that they supported me at the time and just trusted me with their magazine. Uh, well, with my articles in the magazine, <laughs> not with the whole magazine, I guess. And yeah, then I started actually publishing them by myself. And um, that worked really well as well. So I wrote them under my own name and, eventually I have my own website and selling them on my website now as well so um yeah that worked really well and I'm really enjoying that and it's totally addictive then I've got so many ideas for more patterns all the time so it's not yeah. having enough hours in the day isn't it for all the oh, ideas yeah. that you dream up yeah I just know I've got I think I'm currently working on three if not four patterns in different stages at yeah. the prototype stage so I've got capacity for the first one and the other one is lots of scribbles and then I've got some actually testing with my best friend. She's doing some stuff. So it's like, yeah, lots of going on at the same time. But yeah, it takes so long to publish one. But Amazing. Yeah. I can't wait to see what you come up with. And uh, you're known for your love of Heather Ross fabrics. Uh, when did you first discover her beautiful collections? Was it literally love at first sight? You had to have them. Um, oh, if I'm honest, not really. Oh. Because initially, okay. I seen lots of my friends. They were totally into that. And I just didn't get it because they were all just buying really expensive fabric like old pajama pieces like small teeny pieces for like hundreds of dollars and I just didn't know why why would you buy a pajama piece like why are so mental for that um but so I just didn't get it at that point I really liked solids and by just by chance a friend of mine Annabelle Annabelle Wickley from Little Pincushion Studio she contacted me and asked me if I would like all her old Heather Wash fabric that she just had lying around and I don't even know why she asked me that. But yeah, I said yes. And she sent it all to me. And I really liked it. And she had an amazing collection that she just 
give to me basically and um and I think it's because she is actually friends with Heather Ross herself and she's working with her quite a lot so she had like all these pretty fabrics and she gave them to me and um yeah that's when I became addicted I think because they were just so nice and they work so nicely with solids and yeah she sent me a big batch of pink Heather Ross and it's just yeah I loved it and yeah I love all since then I just love all of her bags actually so Rest of history really isn't it yeah and I can't stop I have to stop maybe but but yeah I can't stop this just so beautiful <laughs> the next line is just so beautiful and yeah huge fan <laughs> So you've just started the Let's Make a Quilt Together group on Facebook. Yeah. Um, I've joined this group and I can see so many beginners making their first tentative steps into patchwork. Uh, can you tell us more about the group? Yeah, it's it's a really nice group, I think. Um, I started that, it's now, I think, six weeks ago. And that was just after the summer. And there was you know, the new restrictions were announced in the UK again about lockdown, potentially going back. And I just remember how I felt like with the first lockdown. I don't know about you, but back then I felt like in March, I couldn't do anything. I couldn't sew. I just felt like, um, even though this is my hobby and my, my, my place and me doing yoga, basically, and just relaxing from the world outside, I couldn't do that during the first round of lockdown. And I was really like frozen during that time. And when they announced like the restrictions are coming back and I thought, well, I don't want to go there again. And I'm surely I'm not the only one feeling like that. Just not wanting to sew um so I thought oh, surely I'm not alone and there are so many other people feeling the same and I talked to my friends and they kind of lots of my friends actually never been sewn they all bought sewing machines during the first round of lockdown because they also wear masks and they knew how to sew from school basically they just knew how to do like the straight line but they couldn't do much more so and I thought well that's not the only ones again there's so many people in the world now having a mask but there's more to do, right? So, I mean, you know it as well, kind of quilting is so addictive and it's just lovely. It's such a great hobby and helping these people that now have a sewing machine just do the next step, basically, and find now the world of quilting. It's actually not that hard and just showing them what to do next after after making masks. So, um, yeah. And this is why I thought kind of like, let's do this together. And I thought it would be nice to do this as a group uh, and make something nice but I didn't just want it to be about sewing even though um of course you're making a quilt but I wanted the community aspect of the whole thing kind of so it would be just otherwise it would be just another quilt along I thought on Instagram tying us together via hashtag but yeah. the, the community wouldn't be there and it was for me it was all about the community rather than the quilt even though the quilt of course is very important because that's what we're making but it was more about the community aspect of the whole thing. So we're not alone in this and we're doing something nice and keeping each other accountable. I so, guess it's yeah. going on that journey of making a quilt together, being a beginner, learning from yeah. each other, making mistakes together, and then ultimately making the quilts together, sharing them, celebrating them, and then perhaps thinking in the future about what you're going to do next as well. Yeah, exactly. Kind of they're doing something tangible. So they know like after doing this quilt with me, hopefully by mid-December they all finish their first quilts and then they have something tangible. They have their lockdown quilt. Mm. The first they ever really made except masks and now they made something that they will love and a quilt is so powerful as you know and like let's introduce more people into this medium of quilting and yeah this passion that we have for that and um yeah that's what I love and that's why I thought kind of this group would be nice on Facebook because there's a real group feeling on Facebook in these yeah close group even though they're close I mean everybody can join if they want so um but it's a close group in the end so we can talk and it feels like private in the end and yeah, there's lots of content. I mean, I'm, I'm providing lots of content as well. So people can like watch videos there as well. So if they've never done anything, I just talk them through on little video clips every step on the way. So they're not alone. They can watch them whenever they want. So they can watch them, I don't know, next week or in a year's time. They're all going to be saved. So they're not lost somewhere in my Instagram feed or in, I don't know, the, the algorithm of Facebook or something. But mm-hmm. they're safe. Like, everybody can find them and do them whenever they want. Um. And also have great guests like you as well, right? So um, that's a new thing <laughs> going on. Him, yes. <laughs> yeah, which is so lovely because I thought, yeah, I'm a quilter, but I don't know it all. There's so many other people. And yeah, I had friends in the first couple of weeks. I had Annabelle Berkeley from Little Bit Christian Studio. And I had Lucy from Charm About You and Atia from The Bright Blooms. So they were my first guests. And um, they've done little videos and talking to, to you guys about 
how to make a quilt. And yeah, next week it's you, Sarah, right? <laughs> next so, yeah, you're the next one. And I've got more people coming. So it's not just me actually talking at this group and they're all just learning something. It's really interactive. And it's people from the industry sharing their love. And yeah, and I hope that new quilters will actually get into that maybe easier than I did back then. <laughs> so um, so it's just much easier to, to see that what a great community there is. And I think that's the beauty of the Facebook groups, isn't it? It's that um, kind of sense of relative safety within that group and going on that journey together. And like you say, all those resources always being there. I think it's brilliant. That is great. Yeah, like the information side of it, like how to make the quilt, that's always going to be there for them, like whenever, next year or in two years' time, that will be still there. But also we can talk to each other much better. So if somebody posts something on this Facebook group, we can all answer properly. On Instagram, I feel it doesn't work the same way. It's just, yeah, there's a hashtag, but it somehow gets lost in, yeah. I don't know, yeah, in in Instagram world or something. It's not the same community feeling, and it's just great over there so far. I think it's amazing. We have 500 people now, and yeah, it's amazing. getting bigger all the time. So it's really, really nice, yeah. Oh, I think you've done a brilliant job. I think it's it's a great thing what you've done. So well done. Oh, thank you. Sure many people <laughs> are really thankful that you've sort of started them off so yeah that's really great and uh, one thing I that I do love that you do as well as your project Mm -hmm. projects is your uh, beautiful photography and your videos and um, your children often feature um, not their heads just their bodies mostly (laughs) holding uh, lovely projects that you've made Um, have they started sewing yet have you attempted to teach them well my son couldn't care less I think he just doesn't care about sewing he's into Lego and Star Wars and all that but yeah my daughter she likes it she likes the idea about sewing I think she's got her own sewing machine as well and for small little projects yes I think she's doing it she can't really sit for longer so she can't make a whole bag in one go or something no. but I'm trying quilting with her but yeah really small steps small but steps. <laughs> yeah she likes picking fabric so what she does for me is like she picks her fabrics and then I have to make something of it and then she likes having it and showing it to her friends and all that but yeah, she's not got the patience yet to actually sit down and do it herself. But yeah, I'm, I'm hoping, I'm still hoping. <laughs> <laughs> so have you started making plans for 2021? What can we see from you next? Oh, yeah, I've got lots of big plans. I can't talk about everything, but yeah, I, I plan to do more patterns, obviously. Mm-hmm. Like I've got quite a few lined up. Um, I want to go into blogging a lot more. I'm really enjoying that. I'm doing that now for Let's Make a Quilt Together. I've got now blog post on my website for that as well, which is really, really fun because you can just say so much more in a blog post than on an Instagram post or even in a Facebook group. So I really enjoy that of going into depth into different topics. And yeah, what else? Oh, yeah, Let's Make a Quilt Together. I want to do like a second world and a third world. I'd like to make maybe another quilt or... I don't know, let's make a bag together or something. I think we can totally do that for longer. But we, we're finishing now in mid-December, I think. But and it's very simple, the quilts that people are making. Yeah, up. it's a super make. simple just quilt just now. That we're making. Yeah, super simple quilt. And um, But I thought kind of I need a break maybe over Christmas, but then maybe in January. I mean, surely we're still all going to be in lockdown, so we could still do with more crafting together and being kind of like social together. And um, so maybe another project, maybe a little trickier quilt or um, we're just learning techniques maybe or we do maybe bags if people are interested. So, yeah, I will see what the group likes to do and then we just see what we could do next. So that's the big plan of continuing. Let's make a quilt together, maybe in a slightly different, not in the same format maybe, but a different topic. So mm. that will be my plan for 21, I think. And that's really nice that it's kind of growing organically and that you're going to shape your content based on what people want. As yeah well. I ask them all the time yeah yeah which is really nice because I don't really know what really new people need just now and yeah I'm asking them a lot and it's really really helpful so in another plus point for Facebook you can just ask the people in the group what they want and they tell you do little polls and then yeah you just do that so yeah it's amazing yeah that's great and finally, I like my guests to share two top tips with the listeners. Mm-hmm. So I wondered if you had any top tips for beginner quilters who um, might be joining your Let's Make a Quilt Together or indeed just starting off on their own. Yeah, I would say, well, um, maybe like try to sew every day and just for a short time, like for 50 minutes a day or something, like or 10 minutes if you have that time. 
just because it's your time, it's kind of like, I don't know, the kids are in bed, you're finished with your job or whatever you do at daytime, that's finished. But now it's your time. So mm-hmm. try to calm down. I know you might not always feel like that, but it's just nice. And after a couple of minutes, surely you will love it so much and you're glad that you've done that. So yeah, do every day just a little bit. So that would be my first tip. And the second tip, um, I think it would be, I mean, always try to get better, I think. Kind of always just try to learn something, push yourself. But at the same time, and this is my tip, I think just be gentle with yourself, be kind to yourself. You don't need to be perfect. Yeah. Um, I had this in this group quite a bit. Like people got upset that their quilts were imperfect, but they don't have to be. It's like your first quilt, you can relax. It doesn't need to be like, or the seams need to match nicely, or I don't know, or it needs to be straight. But I mean, always push yourself, learn more. That's always great. Maybe that's the German in me, I don't know, just really trying to achieve better. But I mean, also be gentle to yourself because nobody really wants a 100% perfect quilt. Really, people just, I don't know, there's so much more love in a quilt if it's handmade and maybe like wonky little stitches. I mean, and nobody will notice, I think, kind of, I don't know, if you give the quilt to your kids, they won't even complain, right? On, um, <laughs> and the process yeah. isn't meant to be stressful. It's meant no, to bring yeah. us joy. And if you're stressing over every single mismatched point or whatever, it's it's taking the joy away. And the whole idea of it is to be a release from the outside world, to be creative, to be calming, to be relaxing. And so we do have to just let go of it sometimes, don't we? Uh, exactly. Let just... This is your your time and or your yoga time, whatever, to calm down and relax. And so you should enjoy that. Even though I still think you should try to make it better for next time, because mm-hmm. surely you can push yourself to to learn the next technique or to really match those seam maybe a bit better for the next time. But I mean, don't be upset if they're not matching on the first quilt or on your I don't know tenth quilt or something. I mean, it's not that important. But yeah, just relax, be kind to yourself. I think that's the second tip. Just you're learning still. Everybody's still learning. So yeah. I couldn't agree more, Laura. Well, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. It's been really lovely getting to know more about you and uh, your projects. And uh, we're really excited to see what you do next year. Oh, thanks so much, Sarah. Thanks for having me. Thank you once again to my sponsors, Orifil Thread and Rose Garden Patchwork for sponsoring this episode. And thank you for listening. You can now find all of Series 1 and 2 episodes on the brand new website greatbritishquilter.com you can also join in the facebook group great british quilter to meet fellow quilters and join the community